also a recipient of Prime Minister Research Fellowship. Today, I'm here to discuss about what are the biomarkers that are involved in a breast cancer. Uh, coming to the contents of my slide, uh, I'll start with an introduction and then followed by what are the theories that explain how exactly is the cancer expansion takes place and the progression of cancer and the, the main important topic, which is breast cancer, followed by its biomarkers and the types and then symptoms and then a treatment. And what does our lab do? Uh, what does we do at IIT Hyderabad? So uh, coming to the introduction, as everyone knows how to define cancer, cancer is nothing but it is a, it is a disease where, where someone finds a abnormality growth of a cells. Or we can, I can simply define it in such a way that your cells will multiply. Whatever the cells that, is, that are there in your body will multiply so enormously or so rapidly, which will lead to a abnormal cell growth, uh, which, which we call it as a cancer. Cancer is nothing but an abnormal cell division that takes place in our body. Now, why does this abnormal cell division takes place? It's because there are certain mutations that have taken place in your DNA. That's the reason your cell is behaving abnormally, which have, uh, which have uh, the final result is nothing but a cancer, which is a disease. So, um, uh, what is the difference between a normal cell and a no? cancerous cell? Like in a, in a normal cell, for a one cell to divide it into a two cell, it should follow few of the fundamental pathways, uh, both in the range of molecular, biochemical and the cellular levels that will in turn uh, control the cell proliferation and differentiation and then also cell death. In a normal cell, even the cell death is a programmed uh, way, which we call it as an apoptosis. But when we see an uh, abnormal cell or a cancerous cell, all of these fundamental networks that regulate cell proliferation, cell differentiation, and the cell death, all of these are not um, all, all of these are not uh, maintained properly. Or there is so much of variations. It's because of the mutations that have occurred in the DNA in that specific cell. So this is how uh, we define a cancer. So, and then uh, coming to another, coming to how do you, how will you differentiate whether it's a normal cell or a cancer cell? As I was telling in a previous uh, slide of mine, normal cell, it follows a proper regulatory uh, properties or proper rules and regulations of cell division and then all. And then it have proper shapes. Uh, and then it have a proper organization of the chromosomes, which are nothing but a DNA. But when you see a cancer cell, as I was defining, uh, as I was defining a cancer, it's nothing but an abnormal or a continuous growth of a cells. It have it where, and then you cannot tell that th this is a shape of a cancer, can cancerous cell. Cancerous cell have an abnormality in their shape too. And then if you see, if you compare the nucleus of a normal cell and a cancerous cell, normal cell nucleus will be rounded, but a cancerous cell nucleus will be larger in size. And then also the organization of a chromosome, which is nothing but a DNA. Usually in a DNA, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, which are in a normal cell. All of these 23 pairs of chromosomes are organized in a proper way, like, you know, proper pairing of 23 chromosomes. But when you see the cancerous cell, the disorganized of this uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes or whatever the number of chromosomes that are pair, that are present in a cell are very much disorganized. Uh, and then uh, if you see uh, the, and then uh, the boundary, if you see a normal cell also, it will have a proper boundary. If you see a cancerous cell, it doesn't have any defined boundary. So mainly these three properties, variations in the shapes and size, and then also variation in nucleus, and then uh, variation in the number of chromosomes. These three properties of a cancerous cell Will I uh, will tell a diagnostic or a laboratory person to differentiate what exactly is a normal cell and then what exactly is a cancerous cell. Abnormality in a number of chromosomes is usually studied by using a method called as a karyotyping. In a karyotyping methodology, you will find how exactly uh, is the organization of a chromosomes in a cancerous cell. So uh, and then. Um, what are the properties of cancerous cell? How does it, uh, like how how does how does it will survive in a in our body, which have so many immune cells, right? Whatever whatever our body immune system is there, 
when there is some kind of a foreign antigen that have entered in our body all of the immune cells will activate and then somehow it will it will try to eliminate whatever the foreign antigen that is present in our body and then make our body healthy and then happy but when it comes to cancerous cell what is there in this cancerous cell which is making our immune system very weak and then and then this cancerous cell cell is survived first thing uh, this cancerous cell which have some of some kind of an inbuilt uh, mutations or some kind of an inbuilt proteins that it makes which will disrupt the compute immune system and then it have an ability to replicate its dna so much so that there will be so much of cell division that are already taking place in a body so that like suppose if if a cell divides in a normal way a 10 if a cell divides in if one cell divides into 10 we can control it like whatever the replication process or whatever the regulatory mechanisms are that we can control it suppose if one cell is dividing into some 50 to 100 cells there is no there is there is no such regulatory mechanism that can control the divisions of these cells and then the other thing is like uh this cancerous cell have a very good ability to move from one cell to another cell to move from one tissue to another tissue to move from one organ to another organ so that sub cancerous spreads all over the body which we call a phenomena called as a metastasis okay and then the other like uh, f- uh, and then uh, and the other important very good property is like this cancer have an inbuilt capacity to induce angiogenesis angiogenesis is nothing but the formation of new blood vessels so why do we need this blood vessels generally in our body or in a normal cell or in a cancerous cell the importance of blood vessels is nothing but it supply all of these nutrients and then uh, gases exchange and all takes place in our uh, uh, through the process of angiogenesis so it's because it induces so much of angiogenesis it also helps in the survival of cancerous cell and then uh, they have they, they they have few of the uh, mutations in them which have resistor for the cell death so all of these properties together make a cancerous cell uh, to avoid the immune system or to avoid our immune system properties and then survival of their uh, uh, cancer in our body so uh, there are var- there are various theories that come across uh, there are various theories that ha- that have already came across from decade uh, you know from so past of decade how does a cancerous how does a single cancerous cell is evolving or like what are the theories that have explained so but uh, there are many many theories but in those so many 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 theories there are two theories that have uh, promising uh, like people have people started believing it up one is in clonal evolution model and the other is in cancer stem model uh, the first theory is in clover clonal evolution model what does it state consider you have your uh, just imagine yourself that there is a, a skin tissue like you are touching your hand and then there is so much of normal cells that are present in that it's because of the mutation that have occurred in those normal skin tissue cells it have altered its dna and then that's how it have formed it have gained another form of a cells which are nothing but the cancerous cells so this pink cells that you see over here are a normal cell it's because of the mutation that have taken place in a dna that is present in the nucleus of these cells which have attained some other properties which are which are not similar to a normal cell so now this uh, attain now so, so so now this new um, mutated cell will replicate so much so much so much so that it forms a cancerous cell this mutation can be either a physical mutation or a chemical mutation physical mutation can be because of the radiations like x ray and then uv chemical radi- chemical mutations it can be because of many chemicals that usually we daily exposed to so um, and then the uh, and then the recently coming up model is a cancer stem cell model what does this model tells like there is one uh, there is there are one group of cancer cells okay uh, sorry there are there are some group of cancer cells in that group of cancer cells there is a very sub population of cancer stem cells which i'm like which you over here you can see it as a gray color okay so uh, what does this uh, what does this uh, cancer stem cell that is present in a cancer do if you when you see the property of a stem cell also it 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 have an ability to self renew so much and then also differentiate into many different types 
so it's because of the presence of few stem cells in a population of cancer cell it can divide so much asymmetrically and then form a group of cells which are nothing but the heterogeneous cells in which there are so many tumor uh, in which there are many many different types of cells that are present so uh, in a conclusion there are two, basically there are two different uh, theories one is an evolution theory and the other is a cancer stem cell theory evolution theory tells that it's because of the mutation that have taken place in a normal cell that's the reason normal cell is converted to an abnormal cell now this abnormal cell have attained few of the properties which can expand so much cell division can occur and form a cancerous cell and the cancer stem cell model is much more related to a stem cell which tells that has stem cells mane it, it how do we define stem cell it have an uh, it have a self renewal capacity at the same time it can differentiate into many different types of cells it's because of the asymmetric division so it's because of this property uh, uh to a uh, tumor whatever how much ever the treatments that you give to a cancer patient it's because of this property a cancer a cancer uh, in a specific person will never ever die so uh, so there are few of the therapies that have targeted a uh, stem cells that are present in a cancer cell and then coming up let's see how does it progress but uh, but but uh, but down the lane now started people also started believing that you know that it might be because of the presence of few stem cells that are present in a cancer cell that's how uh, relapse of the relapse or reoccurrence of a tumor is taking place even if we treat them with chemotherapy or any any of the radiations and the all so this is how the progression of a cancer takes place suppose if you have a one mutation or one clone of mutation this one clone of mutation will again start into a clone two and then also there will be some other kind of mutation that will be taking place which will form a clone three and clone four if you see this clone two it have already it has a mutated one and then there is other kind of mutation that is taking place in a dna which is forms a two pointer so it's because of the so many mutations that are taking place in a dna uh, of all of these cells all of these cells together form a heterogeneous cancerous cell uh so uh, but when you see a normal cell uh, if there is of the if there is any kind of a mutation that is taking place in a normal replicatory mechanism there are few of the repair mechan the, uh, like you know like um, if there is of any of the mutation that is taking place in a normal dna replication there are so many enzymes that come up with they there are so many enzymes that come on the role uh, that that come to a role and then uh, somehow they will repair that mutated form and then all they will repair the mutated form to a normal form like uh, if suppose if adenine generally adenine is pairing with thymine and the guanine is pairing with cytosine right so uh, okay generally a a pairs with t and then g pairs with c suppose if a is pairing with c and then g is pairing with t that mean there is there is a certain kind of a mutation that is taking that have already occurred in the structure of a dna right now in a normal cell what does have what does it happen there will be few of the rep, uh, repair enzymes that will come up onto the role and then remove this t and then insert c right but when you see a cancerous cell all of these repair enzymes will be inhibited none of the repair enzymes will be working so that's how all of these mutations that have occurred in a cell will never ever be uh, will never ever be repaired and then that's how you have so much of mutations that are accumulated in a cell which will lead to an heterogeneous cancerous cell so uh, um that's how uh, the introduction is so now coming to our topic what exactly is a breast cancer so uh, when you see uh, before talking about the cancer in a breast cells let's talk about how does a breast cell look like uh, in a breast cell like there are two main components that are present in a breast one are the lobules that you see this uh, violet color structures and the other is a duct so uh, lobules are those part in which the milk is produced and the duct and the ducts are those passages like structures which will collect the milk that is produced in these glandulars and then eject it out so if you see the structure of this epithelial cells and then also the duct over here epithelial cells are actually 
the cells of the lobular cells. And then the smaller, smaller square shaped cells that you see are nothing but a ductal um, epithelial cells. So uh, when you see uh, where, um, what, ha what exactly happens over here in a breast cancer, there are three main uh, regions. There are three main regions mainly in which, uh, in which a cancer can occur. The first region is a lobular part. Uh, in which the milk is produced and the other region is a ductal part in which all of this collecting, uh, in which all of this uh, milk that is produced in this uh, lobular will be collected through the passages and then will be ejected. The other thing, the other, uh, the third one where uh, cancer can originate in a breast cancer is this fat or the stromal connective tissue. Like if you see this yellow color, uh, uh, yellow color tissue that is there over here, it is nothing but a connective tissue that is present in a breast cancer. So majority of the cancer it will be occurring in a lobular part where milk is produced. And the second uh, and the second majority is in a ductal region. And the third, which is very less common, is a stromal connective tissue, which is nothing but uh, the cancer. If there is an origin of the cancer in this connective tissue, it can lead to a formation of a breast cancer. So. If, if, if a cancer is produced in the lobules, we call it as a lobular carcinoma. If, if, uh, if a cancer is produced in the duct, we call it as a ductular carcinoma. And then if a cancer is produced in the stromal, we call that as a stromal carcinoma. Uh, yeah, are there any doubts? So I, I see that someone has raised their hand. Hello? Yeah, I uh, really? Yeah. Hello? Okay. So uh, there are three main uh, there are three main origins in a breast cell where a cancer can occur. One is a lobular part, another is a ductal part, another is a stromal part. So among these, as I was telling you, the breast cancer, which is occurring at the uh, which is occurring at the lobular part of the Oh, sorry, I have reversed it. Which occurs at the duct is of much more part, uh, which occurs at the majority region, region, and then also followed by lobules, and then also the last is in stromal connective tissue. If you see this, uh, uh, the duct, the duct that, that is there over here, this is a normal duct. This is the occurrence, or you see the morphology of a normal duct. But if we, if if a cancer that is occurred to a ductal region. There is so much of abnormal or irregular organization of cells and then so much of addition of so much of cells. So this is how it looks like. So uh, how does this cancer actually progress? All of the sudden you will get cancer or how it is like. Okay. So initially uh, for the, for the, what happened? Yeah. Initially for the progression of a cancer, at least it will take some three to four years for an initial symptom to appear. What happens in this three to four years, cancer starts building it up from a stage zero to a stage four. In this stage zero, what it takes place, like it starts, uh, like it starts progressing, it starts multiplying from one to two, two to four, eight in that way. So once, it, once a stage zero is completed, it will attain a stage one where it will form a good number of cells. Uh, for for to to uh, to actually progress further more from stage one to stage two it will move like whatever the su suppose uh, th there are two tissues that are present like uh, I'm just drawing it up there are two tissues that are present so whatever if if a cancer has occurred in this tissue I consider this as a primary tumor and then from this primary tumor whatever the cells that are present in this will be invading or traveling through a other traveling into an other tissue or an other organ, which we call it as a secondary tumor. Okay, uh, tumor. So uh, this process of uh, movement of uh, tumor cells from a primary to a secondary region, we call it as a metastasis. So formation of initial loop of cells to this secondary formation of a secondary tumor cell, it will at least take three to four years of time. 
and then uh, at, at the at the fourth like almost at the at the final stage of third year or at the fine at the initial stage of fourth year your symptoms starts appearing either for a breast cancer or for an any of the cancer like lung cancer skin cancer or oral cancer like at the end of this uh, third year and the first, uh, first like you know on this in the span of 3 to 4 it uh, start the symptom starts appearing so that's what over here uh, i have uh, pointed it out over time at the stage 0 cancer may progress and then invade the surrounding breast tissue which we call it as an invasive breast cancer and then spread to a nearby lymph node which we call it as a regional metastasis and then if it spreads to an other organs in a body we call it as a distant metastasis so uh, this is how uh, cancer uh, originates in in a breast cell so but what exactly uh, like what are the different modification that takes place in a cell where uh, where is where where a cancer cell originates so if you see if you see a structure of a cell there are so many different different types of cells that are present there are epithelial cell there are squamous cells there are mesenchymal cells there are so many so many different types of cells but among all of these different types of cell almost 90% of your cancer will originate in epithelial cells epithelial cells are the mostly the function of these epithelial cells is covering up our tissues or covering up our body or covering up an organ so whatever this epithelial linings or the epithelial cells that are present in a tissue this will convert to a different cell which will be mesenchymal mesenchymal cells so this transition from an epithelial to mesenchymal transition which we call it as an important transitions that takes place in a cancer cell is an insertion to form a cancer so that's the reason whatever uh, like most of this cancer will be originating in an epithelial cells or all the coverings of the cell like you know if the skin skin has so much of epithelial cell in so that's the reason usually skin cancer is the most common one if you see um, if you see this breast cancer also uh, the lobules that are on the ducts that are present over here whatever the epithelial cells or the linings of these duct linings of these duct if you see this color uh, in this the insertion of a cancerous cell usually occurs uh, yeah so and then um, why why it is important to study uh, cancer why 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 cancer is so much so much highlighted over here it's because if you see the indian stats every 4 minutes an woman indian woman is diagnosed with breast cancer uh, and then like uh, and the cases that are coming up every year are, are approximately 1.38 million new cases that are coming up and uh, and then the other thing it's very sad to hear that in an every 13 minutes one woman dies of because of the breast cancer and then the other uh, very uh, very bad thing to uh, listen is like this breast cancer is much more common in women than in the men uh yeah there are so many factors which add up why uh, why breast cancer is common in women and than in a man uh it's because of the pregnancy and then the feeding lactation there are so many so many different uh, uh factors that make up and then that tell that this breast cancer is much more common in a woman and than in a man uh this starts tell that by the end of uh, 2020 uh, the weather are approximately 78 million women alive and then the past 5 to 5 years the the instance of this number have increased very rapidly but if you see this number of 1.38 million and then this 13 million this starts is according to the uh, 2022 1 if you see this uh, chart also the one that is uh, pie diagram chart among so many different cancers breast cancer itself occupies 14% so that's the reason it's because of including all of these numbers and the all it's very important to study uh, how the breast cancer develops from an initial to a progress how a how a breast cancer develops from an initial to a final stage and then how, how does uh, like how can we prevent this cancer uh to a leading of further move so uh, how do you detect what is this cancer like how, how does a person is infected or how does a person has cancer in them so uh, for that there is a term called as a biomarker biomarkers are nothing but these are the few of the biological molecules that are produced within a cancer cell which will be helping us to detect 
whether it's a cancer molecule or a normal cell. So all of these biomolecules, which include proteins, enzymes, DNA, RNA, and then few of the uh, uh, cancerous cells also, they act as a markers uh, to detect uh, to detect a breast cancer. See, suppose uh, like you know, uh, in a simpler way, if I tell you, if you run Western blotting, you will load certain kind of a marker. The first will be a ladder in which you have your marker, and then somehow use your protein. Okay. What does a marker serve over here? If suppose if your protein has some 70 kilo dalton is your protein of your nature. If you if that 70 kilo dalton protein will be matching up with a marker of the 70 kilo dalton, so that's how it serves as certain kind of a um, identification molecule, right? So that's how the biomarker the uh, the biomarkers of a breast cancer. There are there are few of the proteins, there are few of the enzymes, there are few of the RNA molecules, and then also cancerous cell which will help us to identify this is a cancer cell. So uh, I hope I'm clear with this biomarker definition. It is nothing in a simpler term. It's a biomolecular molecule that is found in, in a blood or other body fluids or tissues. That is a sign of a normal or an abnormal process or of a condition of a disease. Like if it's a normal, if it's a normal cell, consider there is a protein A. On a normal cell, it produces 10 protein molecules. And then on an abnormal cell, it produces some hundred protein molecules. So there is a variation in the uh, uh, there is a variation in the uh, translation of a protein, right? So now this production of this hundred molecules of a protein will serve as a biomarker to identify whether this is a cancerous cell or a normal cell. And then uh, and then from each person, from one person to another person, the expression of these biomarkers is also different. So this is also one of the, the one of the barrier where people are still struggling to identify uh, or like you know to cure a cancer cell. It's because I will I will have a different markers and then you people will also have a different markers. So it's because of the presence of different biomarkers that a specific person expresses when they are infected with a cancer cell. The the uh, the treatment and the diagnosis is diff is difficult, more difficult. So uh, among them, uh, among there are so many different markers, as I was telling you, the first marker uh, are the receptor markers. So these three markers, uh, estrogen marker, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and then human epidermal growth factor receptor, all these three receptors together serve as a biomarker to identify a breast cancer. So what exactly happens uh, in a normal cell or in a uh, cancerous cell is because like if you see a normal cell the expression of this estrogen receptor will be very less but if you see a cancerous cell there will be so much so many so much of expression of this uh, estrogen receptors so uh, if the, if there is of so much of expression of estrogen receptors receptors so this estrogen gets binds to an receptor molecule when our estrogen which is a ligand I'll write over. Even estrogen, which is a ligand, when it binds to a receptor molecule, this ligand and the receptor, this whole complex will go and then bind to DNA that is present in the nucleus of a cell. So what kind of a DNA it will bind and then activate it? It will activate a DNA molecules that are responsible for the cell proliferation and then also for the cell differentiation. So so imagine yourself, you have so many number of estrogen receptors in a cell and then there, you, and then at the same time you have very good amount of estrogen ligand. So this kind of a ligand and receptor interaction that will be taking place in all of the cells and then that's how, and then all of these genes that are responsible for proliferation and differentiation of a cell will be activated. So that's how the expansion of this uh, cancerous cell will be acting, uh, will be active. Suppose in a normal cell, uh, suppose, like, how do you diagnose? Uh, like, if, if, in, an, in a cancerous patient, the presence of more number of estrogen receptors is a biomarker, is an indication that this person is affected with a cancer. The presence of both progesterone and then estrogen together can also be an indication that a person is infected with cancer. And then uh, the third marker, which is an important marker, which is a human epidermal growth factor receptor, this also functions as the same way. 
this uh, th there are certain her uh, ligands which will bind to the receptor molecules that are present on a cell binding of this ligand to a receptor will enhance the amplification and the overexpression of genes that are responsible for the cell division and then the cell replication so it's generally uh, like uh, it's because of this over cell division and cell replication as I was telling is a property of a cancer how will you identify like presence of this higher levels of estrogen hormone higher levels of progesterone hormone and then higher levels of hcr2 receptors all of these three together will serve as a biomarker to tell that this person is infected or has a breast cancer in them sometimes all of these three uh, sometimes there will be also a case that in which all, uh, all of these three receptors will not be present that there we call the case as a triple negative like you know it's negative for all of these three receptors in that case what is the second biomarker that few of the, the what is the second biomarker that our that doctors usually prescribe to check to diagnose breast cancer is circulating tumor cells as i was talking about a uh, property of metastasis where a uh, where a uh, where a primary tumor will be uh, where a primary tumor will be transported to a secondary region or a secondary uh, tissue or a secondary organ so uh, if you see over here this clump of loop of cells is nothing but a primary tumor which is originated at a specific region it's because of the property of e extravasion and then movement to an other cells now it has uh, now all of these tumor cells is moving into is moving through the blood and then reaching to an other new tissue uh, which we call it as a secondary tumor region so uh, if a person is negative to all of these three uh, receptor molecules like estrogen progesterone and then her receptor the second diagnostic test or a second biomarker that usually people will look it out is the presence of two an antigens that is cea antigen and then a ca antigen so if you see uh, uh, a cancer cell like consider this as a cancer cell whatever this starred one that you see is a presence of these antigens like uh, the ca antigen and then a c antigen these antigens these two antigens will not be present on a normal cell so these these two antigens will be specifically more present on an abnormal cell or a cancerous cell suppose assume yourself that these uh, these these, these uh, cancerous cells are circulating in your body like this like along through the blood what you will do you will derive few of the uh, like, like you will derive some 2 to 3 ml of this blood okay and then anyway blood has all of the cells all of the cells in them in addition to that you will also get this cancerous cells in that uh, in that 2 to 3 ml and then what what exactly is the target now this cancerous cell have certain receptors which certain antigens which are already known that ca and then a c it's because of the presence of these two antigens what do we, what do we do uh, we will we will treat this uh, uh, driven or like this 2 to 3 ml of the blood with certain antibodies that are specific for this antigen now antigen antibody reaction takes place which will further resulting in the formation of a clump like structure so if there are if, if the formation of this clump like structure if it is seen in the blood then that mean there are uh, that then that mean there are few of the tumors there are that that mean there are few of the cancerous cells that are circulating in our body and then now our body has almost reached to a stage 2 or 3 so uh, this circulating tumor cells will actually uh, is actually serves as one of the most important biomarker when all of the three receptors are negative and then the circulating tumor uh, diagnosis with the circulating tumor is growing up so fastly it's because like generally if you see uh, like generally if you talk also like in your relatives or any or any in any other way um sometimes we see that cancerous even if there was a treatment that radiotherapy uh, chemotherapy all of those cases have also occurred within some 2 to 3 years again we can see the reoccurrence of a cancer in that patient why it's because it's because of the one important property of stem cell expansion uh, that's how uh, reoccurrence of the cancer is occur but how can you detect 
it's because of this uh, presence of this uh, uh, it's because of this presence of this cancer tumor cell which have certain antigens okay in a simpler way i can tell you consider that a patient is already infected with a cancer cell okay and then have diagnosed it's been some more than 3 years he have diagnosed so what exactly the person has to do in the 3 years of span for every 6 months he have to go to a doctor and then check his and then check his uh, two antigen uh, two antigens like you know the, the two antigens that are specific for a tumor cell that is ce antigen and the c antigen suppose uh, uh, suppose in this one and a half year like one year to a third year in that three years, one and a half year, it doesn't, it, all, all the time he have tested negative for this uh, two antigens. And now all of a sudden, in another second year or the, the last half of the second year, he started testing for a, testing positive for these two antigens. So the test, the, 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 the positive test for these two antigens will tell that, okay, now the, now the reoccurrence of a cancer has occurred. Now it's an again we have to start our diagnosis process. So uh, this is an uh, like you know you can also do uh, if the technology is evolving up so much this this antigen antibody reaction the way we did it up for the COVID test and the not we can also do this uh, antigen antibody reactions for a specific breast cancer or any of the other cancer sitting at home. This can be a kit kind of a thing. So that's how uh, cancer tumor cell antigens. Can, can serve as an excellent biomarkers to identify at what stage of specific breast cancer is there. So uh, in addition to those tumor circulating cells, the other three, uh, the, the third biomarker is nothing but a protein molecules. And then uh, BRCA1, 2, these two are highly studied proteins uh, in, in, in regard to a breast cancer. So generally, this BRCA1 and then 2 proteins, what exactly is the role of this BRCA1 and then 2 in our body? It's nothing but they are immunosuppressor gene products. Like, you know, what, what is this immune, immune tumor suppressor? Sorry, they are not immune suppressor, they are tumor suppressor. Tumor suppressor gene products, it's because when you have a BRCA1 and then 2 in your body, it's nothing but it's like a shield to your body. It will, it will never ever... Uh, it will never ever uh, like um, it will never ever help in getting up a cancer to your body but when there is a mutation in the BRCA1 and then the BRCA2 all of these the, um, all of this uh, DNA repair mechanism uh, chromosomal organizations all of these important regulatory systems will be uh, will be irregulated okay so when all of this uh, when when there is a mutation in the BRCA1 you will have so much of genomic instability that will be taking place in a cancerous cell. And then you, you um, in a cancerous cell, that's how you will, uh, yeah, usually in a cancerous cell. So um, BRCA1 and then BRCA2, these two proteins actually serve as a very important biomarkers to identify that a person has affected with a, a breast cancer. So in addition to these two BRCA1 and the BRCA2, the most common protein that usually people will uh, scan is for the P53 protein. P53 is also a tumor suppressor protein which will prevent the activity of any of the cancerous cell in our body. But when there is a mutation in a P53 protein, uh, we, can see the, we can see the formation of a tumor cells in our body. Yeah. So... Um, in, uh, so the fourth uh, biomarker that I'll be discussing is a microRNA. Okay, this um, all of these three receptors, circulating tumor cells, proteins, all of these three are common. But uh, but highly now these days microRNAs are the one which are evolving up uh, to diagnose a cancer cell in an easy way. What does this microRNA, what, what exactly is this microRNA? Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, can you show the previous slide at once, please? Huh, huh. This slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Now you can go further. Okay. Um, MicroRNAs are nothing but these are nothing but an endogenous RNA molecule which have a long which have a nucleotide stretch of 18 to 25 molecules. So generally in a microRNAs, 
uh, these microRNAs are produced from introns. Like if you see uh, the structure of a DNA, if you see this, if you see the structure of a DNA, there are exons and then there are introns. You uh, exons, introns, and then all. So usually till now, uh, from uh, like uh, 20 years or 25 years back, what people have considered that exons are only the expressive part of a DNA and then introns are nothing but a junk DNA, right? So when, when it's because of the splicing mechanism, this intron, introns will be removed out and then exon nucleotides will be joined up together to form a proper RNA or to form a proper DNA. So from this DNA, it's because of the transcription, you will find an RNA and then it's because of the translation, you will have a proper protein. But from the back 20 years, there is something that is interesting coming up in this intron part. That was usually thought as a junk DNA, which is based DNA. Now, now people started studying, uh, studying what exactly is the purpose of this junk DNA in a, in a cell. So, which we call it as an introns. So, uh, what um, introns are not, uh, introns, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, one sec. Just... Yeah. So, this junk DNA, which is nothing but the introns, they also undergo a process of transcription to form few of the RNA molecules, but at a stretch of 18 to 25 nucleotides. Okay, not more than that. Uh, the intron part, the DNA that is present in the intron part of a cell undergo transcription process to form a small molecule, RNA molecules, which we call it as a micro RNA molecules, which are at a stretch of 18 to 25 nucleotides. So uh, what, what people have studied, what is what exactly is the importance of microRNA is that microRNA, it undergoes a process of transcription and forms an RNA. Once RNA is formed in your, once a microRNA is formed in your cell, it will participate in the process of regulating transcription of another cells. Like suppose uh, you have, suppose there is a DNA sequence of ATGC. Now, it's because of the transcription, it's a complementary, right? T A C G. Okay, fine. So this will this is the sequence of your RNA molecule, right? Which is transcribed from an intron DNA. Now, what does this microRNA do? Suppose there is this one cancerous cell, okay, and then you don't want the progression of this uh, RNA molecules to be taking place. Like any of the DNA for its progression, DNA has to replicate to form a DNA. DNA has to go undergo transcription to form an RNA, followed by translation to a protein. So whatever the microRNA that is synthesized here will bind to a RNA molecules that are uh, uh, that 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 are transcribed from a normal cell. It's because of the complementarity now. So whatever the whatever the uh, uh, mRNA molecule that are synthesized from a cancerous molecule will have an exactly complementarity with this of a microRNA. That means over here it will have a sequence of ATGC. It's because of this uh, complementarity, this microRNA will bind to a mRNA that is released by a cancerous cell. It's because of this binding now the 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 transcription or the translation of this mRNA will be prevented, right? When there is no translation, there will be no expression of a protein molecule. When there is no expression of a protein molecule, there is no progression of a cancerous cell. So that's how this microRNA, they do play a very important role in, uh, in, in regulating cancerous cell. But, in, uh, how, but uh, when, when there is a mutation in this uh, microRNAs that have, uh, that have transcribed, they will, inter they will act now in a reverse way to our body. Like, you know, uh, they, they, they can initiate a tumor, they can under, they can also help in the process of metastasis uh, like that. So this exosomal microRNA is also coming up in a very great way um, to analyze the breast cancer in a very early stages. So this is one of the biomarker that I can come up. 
and then uh, the other uh, the recent uh, the other last biomarkers of the breast cancers are nothing but circulating tumor dna uh, this, this circulating tumor dna concept is evolving so much it's because you can uh, you can you can analyze a patient within some fraction of uh, like within a span of 24 to 48 hours there are uh, uh, what, what exactly is this with uh, circulating tumor dna is nothing but you have a cancerous cell. This cancerous cell also undergoes process of apoptosis and necrosis, and then it will release its DNA. What, what in he here in this case we call it as a cell-free tumor DNA, which is nothing but ctDNA. So now, using up this cell-free uh, ctDNA, uh, people diagnose what kind of a cancer that it has, what kind of a mutation that it takes place. The same process, like the way I was talking about circulating tumor cell. Uh, we will derive a blood from a patient and then extract DNA from that blood. Once DNA is extracted from the blood, uh, by, by process of RT-PCR, real-time PCR, next generation sequencing, all of these, using up all of these technologies, we will identify what kind of a mutation that has occurred in that specific gene, which have led to a cancerous cell. And then now further next, what will be the procedure there will be few of the drug. There will be few of the drugs, or there will be few of the molecules that will be targeting to this specific mutation, where a mutation can be altered and then formed a normal cell, thereby preventing the progression of a cell. So this is a much more easiest and then a simplest way where people coming up to detect a cancerous cell uh, as a like single shot kind. Uh, I'll I'll tell I'll tell you once again, uh, like generally. Cancerous cell, it undergoes such a kind of an apoptosis, uh, necrosis, and then all, and then it will secrete few of the DNA molecules. So, whatever the DNA molecule that is secreted by a cancerous cell will for sure have a certain kind of a mutation that are taking place in them. Identification of this mutation part is outside of our outside of body is done by using few of the tests like RT PCR, uh, NGS sequencing, and then all. So once a, once, a, once a doctor identifies what kind of a mutation that have led for a person to lead to a cancer can help him for a better, uh, better and the faster treatment where he can lead a happy life. So uh, these, these are the few important biomarkers that people uh, study to understand a uh, progression of a breast cancer. And then what are the symptoms of a breast cancer? Like, how do you identify whether uh, it's a breast cancer or not? See, uh, uh, abnormality of a cell division can also, it's because of the many other different ways. But uh, if you have a thickening of your lump and then alterations in the, your size, size, shape, and then appearance of a breast, these two can serve as a primary symptoms for a biomarker. Redness and then other alterations in the skin can also serve as a biomarker. And then even if you have an abnormal nipple discharge, even that can serve as a symptom for breast cancer. So uh, these are the few of the symptoms that, that are already known. And then what are the diagnoses of a breast cancer? So the first will be screening followed by, uh, if, if a screening is positive, then we'll go for a suspectable diagnosis using all of this uh, magnetic resonance imaging, ultrasonography and the mammography. Followed by if, if, if a person is positive in all of these two cases, then a confirmatory diagnosis is done by using this marker studies that we have discussed over here, using uh, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, gene expression profiling, and then using this KI67 marker, which is a proliferatory marker for a cell. Using all of these tests, we can we can tell that you know uh, the breast what what kind of a cancer or what kind of a mutation that have taken place. So uh, this is one, This I just have, uh, I just thought of showing you how does we do. Uh, suppose like uh, in, uh, suppose we have to identify uh, presence of receptors like estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor or her receptor. How do we do using ELISA test? So uh, already the, um, we can also go it in a reverse way. The antigens can be coated over here. And then there are few of the certain antibodies that will be binded to this specific antigen and then giving up a colored product. So presence of this colored product tell that there are certain antigens which are bound to an antibodies 
that are present in a cancerous cell, and then that's how we can detect a cancerous cell. This is one of the most common ELISA method that people use it. And the second method is an immunostaining method. What do what do they do? They do take certain amount of um, cells or so biopsy, like you know, they they cut some amount of tissue, and then they will do sectioning of that tissue on a glass slide. And then using as this glass slide, suppose if you see over here, these three are the antigens. So whatever the antibodies that are specific for this antigen will be bound to this antibody. And then we can see where we can visualize what exactly is the tissue morphology of this cancerous cell. So this ELISA and then immunostaining are like coming, like these are very old fashioned techniques. I can tell where, where the detection or the diagnosis of the breast cancer has occurred. The, uh, the other technique is nothing but an RT-PCR technique where everyone knows it's because of the COVID sampling, which has an antigen. And then from that antigen, we'll extract uh, from that cell, uh, from that antigen cell, we'll extract an RNA and then transfer onto a 96 well plate where now this RNA molecules will be binding to a specific uh, enzymes and then the primers. It's because of if, if, if suppose there is an A gene that is responsible for a cancer, you can identify how much is the amount of that A gene that is present in that uh, cell, which have led to a cancer. Or you can, like, you know, you can identify a copy number using this RT-PCI. So um, this is how it ends up. Uh, yeah, even though there are so many, uh, so many, so many textbooks, so many experiments, so many things that are coming up, but why, why, why we are not yet uh, reached a, a stage where we can cure cancer? It's because I feel there's a, so much of lack of awareness uh, among women who are there in a ruler. Uh, it's because of so much of lack of awareness. They don't know at what stage uh, the diagnosis or what uh, you know. It's because of this late uh, detection of the cancer is one of the thing. And then uh, lack of early method detection. There are so many detection methods that I have told about biomarkers. There are so many, so many things that are coming up. But identifying a cancer, if, if a person is infected with a cancer, so identification of that cancer within two, two, two to three months, or like, you know, that, that will really help you. That will really help the world to fight a cancer better. And the other thing that I strongly agree is that lack of so much of many in vitro models which can screen a drug effectively. Uh, like, you know, in a, like if you see a pharmaceutical sector, there are on a daily basis, there are so many drugs that are coming up to treat cancer, right? Like, you know, this cancer research is like so long, 30 years, 40 years long, but still there is no cure. It's because there are uh, there is a lack of proper in vitro models or lack of in vitro 3D models that we can see that we can tell where it can uh, diagnose um, or where where you can um, treat a cancer cell with uh, your drug and then see actually effect. See, I understand like all of these clinical studies are uh, are seen in an animal models, right? Before 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 uh, planning up to an uh, mammalian or before planning up to a human people initially start with animal models. But if you see an animal model genome and then our model gene, there will be so much of variation. So uh, like, you know, if, if a specific drug is good to an animal model cancer, cannot be good to a uh, mammalian cancer, right? Or whatever the cancer, if I get it to a human one. So it's because of the presence or it's because of the lack of a proper 3D in vitro models that can screen our drug, uh, uh, like, you know, where we are also lagging it up. So, uh, thank you. Huh. Uh, I, I, I am sorry. I So, what does our lab do? What does we do at IIT? Uh, what, what do we do at IIT? It's, we try to create this 3D microenvironment or exactly the condition or exactly the 3D conditions that will be existing in our body using cells, using extracellular matrix, that is uh, that we that we derive and then uh, we try we try combining so many cells we try combining so many matrix so that's how we will create we we, we try to create a, exactly uh, a 3d model exactly 3d uh, cells exactly 3d cells which will be similar to an nature condition so th thereby 
uh, thereby we can subside the usage of animal animal models to screen our drugs so uh, we we actually uh, what are the work that we are doing in our lab uh, uh, serves as a platform between a drug uh, who between a drug designer and then also an animal model so uh, our animal uh, our models that we prepare in our lab if they are so much of highlighted and then it, uh, as they have so much of similarity uh, with an in vivo conditions or a nature conditions these in vitro models can easily and then can be better used to screen drugs in a very effective way so uh, yeah if anyone have any doubts i'm open for the session Hello. Uh, hello. Ma'am, what is angiogenesis and how it plays a role in, in cancer? Okay. Uh, okay. Angiogenesis is nothing but it's a formation of blood vessels. Okay. If you uh, now you have raised it, like there are two, there are two different mechanisms. One is vasculogenesis and the other is angiogenesis. Vasculogenesis is nothing but where your first endothelial cell is formed, right? Angiogenesis is nothing but how exactly is that endothelial cell is propagated? Like, you know, uh, how your blood vessels are formed. Formation of your blood vessels is because of the process of angiogenesis, right? Now, in a cancerous cell, you need angiogenesis property. It's because your cancerous cell also have to need to be alive, right? So uh, for us to need to be alive, we need blood, we need oxygen, we need nutrients and all, right? In the same way, uh, for a cancerous cell also, it needs angiogenesis to make itself alive. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. I can also answer, uh, like, you know, on this... Uh, like if, ma'am, can you, ex okay, yeah, one sec. Please, can you explain a short summary on the CTDN? Um, um, uh, how, first question that I would like to, uh, like someone have asked you to summarize about CTDN, eh? Um, like, so you have a cell, okay? Uh, you have two pro process, apoptosis and necrosis. Apoptosis is nothing but when a normal cell undergoes a programmed cell death, we call it as apoptosis. What exactly happens in apoptosis? Whatever the death material or uh, remnants of the cell will also be engulfed by another cell. And then that's how you will not see any of the remaining part of the cell. But when a cancerous cell, it bursts out, it releases DNA molecules, right? When these DNA molecules are released out by a cancerous cell, how to, uh, first thing before going that, how does a cancerous cell, have be, how a normal cell have become a cancerous cell? It's because of the mutations that have taken place in a DNA where a normal cell have converted to a cancerous cell. Now, cancerous cell have busted out. Imagine, uh, now a cancerous cell have busted out and then your DNA molecules are all over in your blood, right? When you, when you extract your blood, it has the mutated form of a DNA, right? Using this mutated form of a DNA, you will take it out and then do RT-PCR tests and then NG, uh, uh, next generation sequencing and then all onto that uh, isolated DNA molecule to identify what exactly is um, what exactly is a mutation that have taken place in a DNA. How does this breast cancer have occurred to that specific patient? So that's how the uh, purpose of this CTDNA serves. Uh, I hope I'm clear now. Uh, Ma'am, once, okay. Mom, is it possible to lacto if a female have breast cancer, and if she lactates, does it trans? No, no, no. See, la lactation is not only uh, like you know it ca it cannot be a primary thing to tell that uh, uh, a female has a cancer. Never ever. Always, if they, if a person if if anyone tells a person has a cancer. They will be undergoing so much of screening, so many screening, 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 and then thereby tell that, okay, this person is infected with uh, cancer. How are circulating tumor DNA and the circulating tumor cells? 
different in detection of cancer okay so in a circulating tumor dna you detect uh, you detect uh, you detect the cancer cell based upon dna but in a but in a tumor uh, but in a circulating tumor cell you are detecting a cancer based upon antigen one a dna and the other is an antigen so that's a difference between a circulating tumor dna and the circulating tumor uh, cell possible to have higher chances of breast cancer in bodybuilder women since oh there is nothing like that um no no um that uh, there is nothing like that you know if a breast cancer or if, if a woman is a bodybuilder and have steroid injections there is nothing like that uh, the occurrence of a breast cancer can, can be many in a many different ways it can be it's it can be because of hereditary okay it can be because of the lifestyle it can be because of so many factors that add up uh, to have to get a cancer not only a breast cancer but also another different form of a cancer so yeah nothing like that mam is it possible to detect a cancer cell in an early stage yeah there is so much of research that has, that is going up um, uh, to detect to detect a cancer cell in an early stage but still we are not able to get it it's because cancer cell have so many mutations that it will be taking place on a daily basis so identify identifying a single specific mutation it's okay but if you want to identify so many so many like 100 100 number of mutations which are occurring on a daily basis it's really very difficult right so um, so that's how uh, it is happening so that's how you can that's how there will be a difficulty in the detection of cancer cell on an uh, early basis but still people are trying it up i hope somewhere or the other down the line another 5 to 10 years will be having it up uh, i don't know about my uh, i don't know about your certificate uh, i think you have to talk to this uh, learn to upgrade people they can i hello. get the certificate ha hello uh ma'am uh, if a woman had a ovarian cancer and she cured uh, i mean uh, she had a treatment full treatment uh, a chemotherapy hmm. uh, and uh, a surgery hysterectomy and uh, uh, if uh, uh, the braca1 and braca2 came positive uh, should she uh, remove the breast ha huh. uh, see th- th- this thing uh, braca1 and braca2 removing of the breast all of these are biopsy methods right even 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 if you do this biopsy and then all always uh, uh, i can tell you that 80 80% or 70% there is a chance of reoccurrence of a cancer right yes. that's how the cases are there and then uh, it's not like you know by, it's because of that you will remove it's because of the test of positive of braca1 and braca2 if you remove certain amount of clump of your cell from a breast it's not like you will you will not get your cancer again it's there okay. you there will be always a chance of reoccurrence okay thank you um still there is a chance of spreading to another parts of an yeah okay actually i should have done this not available the list okay uh, i'm sorry what exactly is your question sima um, i there are so many questions that are coming up so that's the reason still there is a chance of spreading to another parts of her uh, yeah to negative patient oh one sec okay yeah yeah e- even if the person is negative there will be a chance of spreading it out uh, there are asymptomatic stages yeah uh, the initial stages will be an asymptomatic uh, stages uh, where we call it as an early stage how to detect like still people are coming it up like using uh, like this uh, circulating tumor cells and then uh, this uh, ct dna these two can serve as an excellent pat- platforms which can detect uh, dna at an early stage it's because uh, on a daily basis or on monthly basis mm, today. the blood sample and then uh, okay. how much amount of what dna is present so these two methods i'm hoping up will someday or the other show up and then detect cancer at early stages 
uh, how to prevent reoccurrence targeting if 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 the cancer cell is expanding in a second uh, phenomena second theory which is uh, stem cell theory if a if a person or if uh, if your treatment targets a cancer cell that is present in a cancer uh, sorry if your treatment cancers a stem cell that is present in a cancer then uh, there is a chance of preventing the reoccurrence of a cancer uh, what age bracket you uh, see uh, this breast cancer uh, the occurrence of this breast cancer can be usually the usually is at early stages but when you hit at the age of 40 to 50 then almost the cancer have developed on the final stage so if so that's how uh, you know the, you I, I to whatever i have read it usually uh, initiates or starts at the age of 20 to 30 yeah how can they over uh, huh. uh, we we cannot lower the chance of getting cancer but you know, uh, it all, you you can modify the lifestyle. You can have healthy lifestyle. You can you can have a proper uh, conscious diet. So that can uh, that can actually help in fighting up so many things. Yeah, wake up early, eat good food, be conscious what you are eating. That can help in somewhere or the other. Uh, how we, how effective is Dostral in breast cancer. Um, I haven't came up, came across this drug called as a dostral limbin. I came across with another drug called as a prescrucum. So, uh, can 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 you explain what what does this target? Whether it's on receptors or where? get it Rima I'm actually uh, not aware whether you are asking for a certificate or uh, whether you are asking question what exactly is the procedure to get it ma'am like are you asking about the certificate if it's certificate uh, the, the learn to upgrade people will help you out in getting a certificate please don't worry about certificate they'll make sure that you will be there yeah, can abnormal thyroid, it can also, it's because this thyroid hormone is one of the main regulatory hormone, which will which will uh, play a key role in so many uh, different functions in our cell. So if there is a abnormality in the thyroid level hormone for so long, there is a chance of a breast cancer. Mom, if lump in breast, it's paining but no redness of skin huh. if you if 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 the if you if if you have a pain but there is no redness that doesn't mean that you have a cancer that's what i was telling your your breast have increased in size that doesn't mean that you have a cancer your breast have increased in size there are so many other different factors that can add up but you cannot you cannot uh, summarize that this person has a cancer based upon one symptom right you have to undergo so many screenings, so many marker identifications, and then tell that uh, this person is affected with uh, this thing. Can abnormal menstrual cycle can lead to breast cancer? Uh, directly or indirectly, I can tell that uh, the abnormality in your menstrual cycle can lead to a breast cancer. It's because menstrual cycle is regulated by two important hormones, progesterone and then estrogen, right? So, I think it will uh, indirectly, yeah. In a combination is effective. Uh, uh, always I tell that the combination of drugs are effective, but in uh, effective to cancerous cell. But you know, this cancerous cell have a very, a very good property of multi-drug resistance in it. Like there are a few of the receptors, like... Uh, ATP binding cassette receptors, what does they do? Whatever the drug molecules that you give to a cancer cell, it will eject out. Okay. So, so that's where it's very difficult to treat cancer cell uh, with these drugs also. It's because cancer cell have a very good multi-drug resistant property. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's kind of difficult 
but a combination of so many so many drugs can be uh, possible but people are coming up targeting up one single shot of a cell and then curing up a cancer uh hormonal imbalance can for sure lead to a cancer hormone if you have a hormonal imbalance in a body it's actually very bad okay like if you see uh, these days the girls have the, the girls are diagnosing with pcod okay which will later on uh, in another it will also have a issues on their uh, birth normal birth and all so always have a good choice of what you eat that's what make your body balanced in all of the way that can prevent all of this if a woman had cancer what are the chances of getting cancer to her son see it's a probability like you know uh, from uh, from human only it's xx right it's always a 50 50 that his son and then a daughter gets uh, getting up to a son and a daughter will actually depend upon his father whether he have uh, whether he have a genes that are that that are responsible for a cancer if that x and this x matches then it's an heterozygous there is a chance of getting to a dog the daughter but not to a son usually there is nothing like that yeah men they also men can also get breast cancer but the occurrence of uh, breast cancer in this men is really very less approximately 0.5 to 1% is what i can tell no it's not contagious it's not contagious breast cancer is not contagious yeah um i can't share my number but you people can reach out me to this mail id i'm typing over here for any of the queries in your future kiranmagajam123 at the rate of gmail.com is my personal mail you can type you can send your mail or whatever the queries that you want to i and feel free and i'm happy to share whatever i can to you people <laughs> 